Do you and your family have a fire escape plan in case of a house fire? If you don't, you should. This is fire prevention week and it's getting colder. We're in that time of year yeah. now where we see a lot more house fires. So we're working to bring you what you need to know to keep your family safe. I talked to Scott Buck, the fire marshal for the Eagle Fire Department about what we need to do to make that happen. I don't think a lot of families have this in place. So what do you suggest? Where should we start? So what you want to do is make a sketch of your home, simple little diagram drawing, and you need to include all the family members. Give us two ways of getting out each room. You always want to start by floors. Go floor by floor through the house. Once you have that plan made, you got to practice it. If you don't practice your plan, it's no good. And you should do that a minimum of twice a year. When it goes off or when your smoke alarm goes off, when you hear that beep, get up on your feet and get outside. And as part of your family's plan. Once we get outside, we should have a meeting place where everybody goes to so we can account for all those people. Do you think families are doing this or do you hear from a lot of families wondering how to start? Eagle's done a very good job of getting into the schools every year and a lot of the literature that we give those kids have the very beginnings of how to do those plans in them and actually a lot of the times we do find it's the kids that are driving those plans. Not necessarily the parents, but the kids. When my son brought that little pamphlet home from school that you probably delivered from the Eagle Fire Department, telling them they need to make a plan. He said, Mom, we need a plan. And he saw that at school. So those pamphlets are obviously getting the word out. You know, there is that fear that parents have of how am I going to get to each kid? What are your suggestions to prepare your kids for that fire alarm going off and what to do? So we go back to when we make our plan. That's why it's very important that the entire family is involved in that, but you will also have the children practice it by themselves because what if they have to self-escape? What if, if you're not able to get to them? You have to practice that because there are those times when one, you either may not be in the home or two, you may be at a point where you can't get to them. We're gonna plan that if we can't go down the hall, what's their second way out? If the door's hot, I don't open it. I go to my window, I open the window, and I get lean out the window, and I can use a pillowcase or anything to get people's attention so they can get to me. So we are getting into that time of the year where we see a lot more fires. Obviously, I know that because I'm a news anchor and we report on so many. But why is it that fires are more common as we enter the fall and winter months? Heating of the wintertime, wood stoves, fireplaces, heating units that may not be up to par for the winter. Um, that's one thing that you want to do is make sure that your furnace has an annual inspection and that it's up to par for the heating season. Have your chimney inspected by a chimney sweep. Have your wood stove inspected. If you have a fueled appliance, natural gas, propane, anything like that, you want to have a CO detector. Families who are watching this right now who need help creating a plan or help with their smoke detectors, uh, can they reach out to the fire department or are we getting too big now where uh, you guys are so busy we can't, you can't help everyone? No, if you contact the fire department, we can certainly assist you in answering any of the questions you have regarding home fire safety or assisting you with a fire safety plan. So you heard it right from Scott. We are not too big for that. Why not reach out, call your local fire department for help and advice. They do want to help you. Some other important safety information. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher on each floor of your home. Also read the directions beforehand so you know how to use it just in case you have an emergency. You're not fiddling with the directions. And every month do a function test on your smoke detectors and your carbon monoxide detectors to make sure they're working the way they're supposed to. These devices do have a push to test button and if you push it and test it, it should go off. Then you know it is working. And when it comes to family safety, the key here, as you just heard, is having a plan and practicing it. So find some time to sit down and create that plan as a family. Doug? Great advice, Maggie. That was a great reminder.